Hello Internet, my name is Ren. This is Ren Rants, a channel where I rant about many things that I care about with a particular focus on pop culture and politics. In this video, we're taking a look at The Orville Season 2, Episode 8, Identity Part 1. This review will have a spoiler-free section at the beginning before I do an on-screen spoiler warning and talk about the plot in a little bit more detail. If you have not seen this episode, please, please, I am begging you, do not watch beyond the spoiler-free section of this video. Go see the episode first, let it just happen and unfold for you, and then come back and watch this video. I would feel bad if I spoiled this episode for you, so I'm not just warning you, I am begging you not to watch the spoilers unless you've seen this episode. Okay? We good? I can't really stop you, but we'll just jump right into my spoiler-free look at this episode because I cannot contain myself anymore. This is probably the best episode of the Orville so far, or very close to it. I think that the episode was very well paced, the story had a lot of unexpected turns, and while you may have anticipated parts of the story, there were moments where it definitely built certain expectations and then deliberately subverted them. And I think it's probably one of the more overall sophisticated episodes that we have seen from the Orville, and I am dying waiting for part two. I need to know what happens. So they definitely accomplished their goal in making the second part of this episode completely unmissable because I will be so upset if I die not knowing what happens. So fingers crossed that I survive until Thursday at the very least. Or I guess Friday because I don't have TV and I need it to be out on Hulu. So universe, if you could not kill me until after that, I really hope I didn't just jinx myself. In a nutshell, I think what was most impressive to me about this episode is how they used a lot of borrowed sci-fi concepts, but they managed to tell a new and fresh story from those concepts. I think that the execution was fantastic, and there were moments in this episode where my jaw was on the floor, I was shocked that they went there, and they really committed to the story that they were telling. They did still have some space for a little bit of humor. You like music? Huh? I was just asking if you like music. I do, Dan, yeah, I, I like music. I like it too. And food. But they definitely hit more of a tone with the drama and what was unfolding in the episode rather than relying so much on gags and little jokes here and there to pick up some of the slowing parts of the writing. I I think that the balance was really good because this was an episode that needed some levity for sure, but I think that they walked a very fine line and they managed to not go over the top with it to the point where it undermined a lot of the more serious moments in the episode. So I was really impressed with this episode. I am so excited for part two, and I don't think that there's anything more that I can say without spoiling it. So if you haven't seen this episode, please go watch it. For those of you who have, let's talk about some spoilers, because I have thoughts. So real quick, I am just going to run through the plot of the episode. Basically, it opens with Isaac beating Ty and Marcus at a game and mocking their inferior intelligence because obviously his far exceeds theirs. And then Claire comes in and they decide to tell Ty and Marcus about their relationship and Isaac shuts down, literally, with no explanation. And while they try to muck about with him and fix him aboard the Orville, it becomes very apparent that they simply do not have the technological capability to repair Isaac. So they get permission from Admiral Halsey to go to Kalon, and it's interesting. 
I think that it answered a lot of the questions that I had about the origin of this species, and it was kind of exactly what you would expect, but I don't know that I expected the Orville to really go there. They approach the planet, and they are scanned and then sent landing coordinates. It sounds like they were very nearly destroyed by some kind of a defense perimeter. They bring Isaac in on a stretcher to see what can be done to repair him, and the Kalon just reveal that Isaac was intentionally deactivated. And at first they're talking about reintegrating his parts, but then they restore him to operating condition, and Isaac announces that he has no intention of returning to the Orville because his mission is complete. Claire is pretty upset and tries to guilt him into coming aboard to say goodbye to Ty and Marcus, and Isaac eventually agrees there is a going away party on the Orville, Bordis is deprived of his corner piece. I want a corner piece. You're kidding. I am not. Please cut me a corner piece. Because you want a flower? Yes. Please cut me a corner piece before- Someone just gives him a random inferior piece that doesn't have a flower on it. I love Bordis so much. Malloy sings a touching song. There's nothing left to say but goodbye. And Isaac announces that they like him, which is true. They have grown to like Isaac over the last year and a half or however long. And Ty presents Isaac with a drawing. That's me and Marcus and your mom. So you remember us. So I expected Isaac to not exactly be touched, but feel some kind of significance for the gift that Ty was giving him. And my boyfriend laughed at me because I was genuinely shocked when Isaac just throws the drawing on the ground after he exits the room. And we do get like a touching goodbye from Claire to him, and it, it all sets this more jarring tone where they're really obviously trying to remind us that Isaac is not like the crew aboard the Orville. And I think that they do a fantastic job of creating kind of a sense of wrongness while still making everything seem relatively on the up and up at first. Ty finds the drawing and he's very upset. Claire finds him sulking in a tree in the simulator and tries to explain to him that Isaac is a machine and doesn't have feelings and it doesn't go over well. Ty sneaks off of the ship and onto the surface of the planet to go find Isaac and rapidly realizes that that is a terrible idea because of all the scary red-eyed Isaacs walking around. So he accidentally climbs down what appears to be some kind of a garbage chute and then walks down a little tunnel. Ed and Kelly are discussing how strange it is that the Kalon are taking so long to decide whether or not they want to join the Union. And Ed begins to wonder if they're stalling, but he can't figure out what motivation they would have for doing that since they're emotionless beings. It all becomes clear after Claire frantically runs into the ready room to announce that Ty is missing and Ed sends her along with Bordis and Tala to find Ty and bring him back aboard. They do find him eventually in the little underground tunnel and they stumble on a massive disorderly catacombs with thousands and thousands of corpses. The remains are not Kalon, they're biological. It became very obvious very quickly that these were the builders of the Kalon, and exactly what happened to them was very, very clear. Obviously, this is the end game of how you would expect artificial life forms to come into control of an entire planet. Because I, I genuinely did wonder about that. Did the Kalon just spontaneously appear? How were they made? Bordis and Tala contact the bridge to reveal what's going on, and they take a look at these 
dome constructs that are all over the planet and realize that they all contain bodies and it's billions and billions of bodies and entire planets worth of people. And this part does make it seem a little bit ridiculous for the Kalon to do their whole high and mighty thing of ancient history. You oscillate between periods of enlightenment and tyranny. Like, sure, we've done some genocides, but we have yet to genocide an entire fucking planet. And while I know they don't have any moral guilt for that behavior, it does seem weird to have that holier-than-thou attitude when you have billions of skeletons in your closet. Just seemed a little inconsistent to me. But after discovering hella dead people, just hella dead people, Ed decides that the smart thing to do is to confront them. Don't know why, because I, I, I genuinely don't know what he thought the end game to confronting them was going to be. They're a technologically superior species. You're on their planet and you're revealing something that they obviously didn't want you to know. Seems like a great idea. So, when the reveal doesn't go well, and the Kalon explain guiltlessly about their genocide due to an irresolvable conflict, it's pretty clear what direction they're going to go from there. So, the Kalon had no intention of joining the Union. Isaac's real mission was to study the Union to assess its strength and threat level, that way, if another irresolvable conflict comes up, the Kalon know what they're in for with a much larger scale genocide. And that seems to be what they're planning. So Ed tries to alert Bordas to what's going on and have him fly the Orville to safety. But of course, of course that doesn't happen because you're among a technologically superior species on their home turf. Instead, the Kalon board the Orville. So it appears that when the Kalon board the Orville and kill several too many crewmen, they almost exclusively kill red shirts. And I find that amazing because that is such a great subtle reference to classic Trek without taking you out of the moment of just how serious the situation is. So the Kalon take control of the Orville by menacing everyone with their head turrets, and they set a course for Earth. And I am so excited for the next part of this episode, although I am going a little bit crazy waiting, because even though I grew up watching TV and having to wait week to week for the next episode, the last several years I haven't had TV, I only use streaming services, so I have become way too accustomed to being able to just binge everything. Episodes that are released on a weekly basis now drive me completely bonkers because I just need to know what happens next. But I will survive. Barely. Unless I jinxed myself earlier. The ending of this episode leaves you in a great kind of all is lost limbo wondering what's going to happen next. Obviously, I don't think this is going to be the end for the Union or for the Orville, but the stepping stones to try and get back to some level of normal, no idea what process that is going to take. And I have to say, I love that this takes sort of little bits and pieces from like the Borg and the Cybermen and the Daleks and combines them into this new and interesting threat where we get to see and understand the origin very clearly. And they just don't pull any punches. It's so explicit. And the aesthetics with the red glowy eyes, I think were an excellent choice. I also thought it was interesting because it seems like that means that Isaac's blue eyes was sort of one of those little things to make him a little more friendly appearing to the biologicals. And it seems like kind of a way to lull them into a false sense of security while he was observing them. So there were all these little details in this episode that I think really showed that there is some sophistication to the storytelling on the Orville. And 
in particular, there is the ability to tackle some really interesting sci-fi concepts and to go there. The balance that they struck between the drama and the humor was amazing, the performances were mostly pretty good, and seeing our characters in this level of trouble was something I was not really anticipating from this series. I think it shows us that the Orville has some chops, that it is willing to to be serious and to just go just all in on a concept. So I am really psyched to see the next episode. I have no idea what we are in store for, but I am sure it will just keep upping the ante. How do you think it's going to turn out? Do you think Isaac's going to be a secret devil agent that has a sudden change of mechanical heart? Is it going to subvert all our expectations and result in the Kalon taking over the Union and Earth? I don't think so, but it would be kind of rad if they did that. Or do you think that someone's going to come in guns a blazing and save the day? Tell me your thoughts down below. If you like my videos, subscribe. If you don't, I am sure you'll tell me. See you next time.